I just thank you for this evening. I thank you for each and every individual and each and every heart here tonight, Lord. I thank you that you are drawing us near to you. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, right now you will move, you will speak through me, that your kingdom come, your will be done, yeah, as it is in heaven, Lord. And we just say, get all the glory. Thank you for every person here tonight. You have a plan and a purpose for them. You have invited them, Lord. You have extended your invitation into your kingdom to them, Lord. And we praise you and honor you and give you glory tonight. Amen and amen. amen. It's good to be together. If you're joining us for the first time this evening, uh, you may not know this, but we've been in an amazing series over the last four weeks called The Good News for the Weary Soul. And we've been preaching through the gospel, and we've been telling about the good news, who is Jesus Christ. And I'm just going to read one scripture to set us up this evening, but it's this in Romans 5. If you need good news this evening, it rests in Jesus. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more? Say, how much more? There we go. Shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? That is the essence of the gospel, that we were once dead in our sin, but now we have been justified through Christ Jesus. We have been forgiven. So all of our sins have been forgiven, and we are made right in the Father's eyes. We have redemption. We are free and we are no longer slaves to sin and no longer slaves to our old way of living. Jesus was the propitiation, that word that we can never say correctly, but we are favored because we are no longer under God's wrath because he was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And lastly, he brings regeneration that we are fully alive. We are no longer dead in our sins, but we are fully alive in Jesus Christ. And that is the good news of the gospel. And we've heard about this over the last few weeks. But my question tonight is, what are you going to do with the good news? Now that you've heard it, what are you going to do with it? Because we've each have been given a gift. And I don't know how often you think about the Roman Empire, but... The Romans thought about a great invention called the newspaper. You may not know this. The newspaper was actually invented in 59 BCE, 59 years before Christ. They needed a way to spread news around the Roman Empire and around each and every city that called Rome their, like, that called Rome their empire. And they needed a way to spread news about gossip, about current events, about things going on. And they knew that in order to get this news out, they needed to tell everyone how good and how glorious the Roman Empire is. But the same way that we have received the good news, the gospel, we need to spread it far and wide. If we aren't spreading it far and wide, that is not really good news at all. It's just another Sunday service. It's just another preach that maybe you've heard, but it's not getting deep inside of our hearts. And to maybe bring this analogy to to the four year is imagine I just was 30 minutes late one day to preach. I ran up on stage and I was huffing and puffing. And then you maybe ask, Michael, what's going on? Why are you so late? Why are you just coming in right now? And I say, well, you wouldn't believe the craziest story happened, right? I, I was on the highway. I was coming to church. I was coming to the evening service. And all of a sudden, I get a flat tire. And I needed to get out and change my tire. You may stop believing me at that point because I don't know how to change a tire. But I need to get out, I need to change my tire, I, I need to use my muscles and jack the car up and do all those things. And while I'm doing that, all of a sudden, there's a petrol tanker that's hurtling down the highway, and it careens and swerves, and it hits me at full force, and I'm gone in an instant. And you will be going, but that doesn't make any sense. I don't believe that because you're speaking to us here tonight. You are making, you're making up stories, you're telling lies. Why would you think that, you would be, that we would believe this story? And my question tonight is, if you think that I couldn't be hit by a petrol tanker and be here, that there's such a powerful encounter with something, it's the same with the good news of Jesus Christ. That if we have been encountering Jesus Christ, our lives will be forever changed and transformed. What is more powerful, a petrol tanker or the God who created the heavens and the earth? See, if you encounter the good news of Jesus Christ, you can never be the same again. And you will hear me preach it time and time again about the transformed life, that we're not the same, that the old is gone and the new has come. And I really, really do believe it. Why? Because Jesus transforms and changes lives in an instant. 
and he can do it for you this evening. And he has already done it on the cross all those years ago. And he is calling you. He is inviting you tonight into a greater story. And so the title of my preach is simply this, The Greatest Invitation. And you're going to find something on your chairs. And I believe that Jesus is calling each and every one of us. He's inviting each and every one of us into his kingdom. To partake in something glorious, to partake in something far beyond our wildest dreams or imaginations. And that he has something prepared for us. And so he is inviting you tonight. And Jesus likens this invitation to a wedding feast. That each of you have been invited to a wedding. And we've just had the wedding of the decade, the Magor wedding. There we go. And you would have known how, how painstaking that process was. There were preparations for days. Months before the time they were preparing. Even weeks before. Maybe the night before they were still preparing. But it was a, a wedding of celebration. It was a wedding that you wanted to be at. Why? Because you knew you had expectation for what was going to happen. There was going to be dancing. Eco was going to try and dance. Henry was going to set the dance floor alight. There was going to be celebrations. There was going to be good food. There was going to be joyous occasions. You had an expectation for what was coming. And I want to ask you, what is your expectation for what Jesus wants to do in your life tonight? There's an invitation that he extends. And he uh, likens this to the parable of the wedding feast. And you can turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 14. And if you don't have your Bibles here tonight, I want to encourage you, bring your Bibles together. We want to grow together in God's Word. We want to grow as a community, but it will be on the screen behind me. But why don't you even take out your phone, take notes. We want to do this as a community and grow together. But it says this in Luke chapter, chapter 14, verse 15 to 24. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. He was correct there. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they are all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I've just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. And Jesus likens the kingdom of God to this amazing wedding feast. It is the wedding like no other wedding. There are no expenses being paid. There is all the food that you can imagine, all the drink that you can imagine, all the festivities and parties and dancing that you can imagine at this wedding. And Jesus is saying that all of us have been invited. All of us have received an invitation about the good news. You have, if you have heard the good news about Jesus Christ, you have received the invitation. And what we do with this invitation is important. Back in, the, uh, in those times in the Jewish culture, they would be told about the wedding, but they would not be told when the wedding date was. And so excitement would start to build up, and there would be a sense of expectation. And when you receive a wedding invite, I always get a sense of expectation. I start thinking what I'm going to wear. I start thinking about my outfits and how good I'm going to look. I start thinking about all the delicious food I'm going to eat. That sense of expectation builds. And so they wouldn't be told when the wedding is, but a second invite would come around. And then they would say, hey, the wedding feast is ready. Come, bring your family, bring your friends. Come, uh, say yes to the invite. Come along and see how good and glorious this is. And so Jesus is saying that not only will you receive the invite, but you need to be ready for when that day comes, right? As believers, if you've heard the good news, you need to be prepared. You need to be ready. And I believe that some of us here tonight have received the invite many years ago. We've heard the good news of Jesus Christ. We've said yes to the invite, but I feel like there's still more for some of us. That actually we've said yes to the invite, but don't forget about the wedding banquet. 
Don't forget that that day is coming. Don't forget that there's something that he wants to do inside of your heart that he actually wants to bring expectation again. He wants to bring faith to your story again. He wants to bring hope and joy and freedom to your story again. It's not just an invitation you received one day in the past. He is still working and he's still calling you into a greater story. But so this invite goes out and everyone is invited. There is no discrimination here about who is invited to this wedding. wedding. And so that should bring comfort and peace and joy to your heart tonight. Because it's not based on your abilities or your flaws or your disqualifications or inadequacies or what you can bring to the table in order to receive this invite. No, it's just based on the blood and the grace of Jesus Christ. Because we were uh, bought at a price and our debt was paid in full, you have received the invitation. Because he broke the penalty and the weight of sin and you are no longer a slave to sin but a slave to righteousness, you have received the invitation. Because he paid the perfect sacrifice on the cross and took the wrath of God on his own body, you have received the invitation. Because the old has gone and the new has come and you have been given new life in Christ Jesus, you have received the invitation. It doesn't depend on your abilities. It doesn't depend on your story. It doesn't depend on how good of a Christian you are. It only depends on the good news of the gospel, which is Jesus Christ, church. He's inviting you this evening. There is an invitation at stake here. And so each of us receive an invitation. And so you have been invited, not because of your merits, but because the host desperately wants you there. Your Father in heaven, has prepared a wedding feast one day in eternity for you, that you can feast in the, at the banquet, that you can sit at the f- a table at the feet of Jesus Christ and you can experience all goodness, all favor, all blessing in eternity. Why? Because he sent his son to die on the cross for you because of his great love, because of his plan and his redemption. And it's not just about attending church on a Sunday. If our plan was to pull off a great church service and great worship set and mediocre preaching, no, it's about him and his kingdom and his glory and the saints coming alive to his gospel. It's about people being set free and knowing in eternity, having the mindset of eternity that is not just about the present. It's about eternity, that there's eternity in stake and people need to hear about the good news. If we've received the invitation, we need to shout about it. It's not just for us. He wants all to come. It doesn't depend on your background, your race, your demographic, your social status, whether you are rich or poor or lame or you are wealthy or healthy. It does not depend on you. It depends on Him. And all are invited. All need redemption. All need the perfect blood of Jesus Christ. And if you don't believe it, then I'm going to ask you, will you ask God to reveal himself to you and reveal how good the good news is? See, we all have been invited. That is the good news of the invitation. Ephesians 1 says this, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. See, he prepared your invitation from the beginning of creation He prepared your invitation before you knew him. He prepared your invitation in your lowest and weakest moment. He prepared your invitation when you wanted nothing to do with him. He prepared your invitation even while you were running. He prepared your invitation even when you were just starting to come near to him. He prepared your invitation from the beginning of time in Christ Jesus. He always had a plan and a purpose for the world. And so my question tonight is, if you've received the invitation, what is going to be your response? So easily we get distracted by things in this world. So easily we lose sight of that invitation that we once uh, received. So easily we lose sight of eternity and what the gospel is about. The main thing is the main thing that is about Jesus Christ coming to redeem the world, to save and seek the lost. And we were once lost. And we are called to save and seek those who are lost in him as well. And so there is an invitation tonight. And my second point is simply this. What is your RSVP going to be? See, the kingdom of heaven is not a funeral. It's not a sad place. The kingdom of heaven is about God's reign in our lives each and every day. 
it's not just about one day being in eternity. It's actually about heaven right here and now. That he wants to know you and be known by you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. There's good news. Good news that makes you joyful. Good news that brings hope to your soul. Good news which should anchor you. And maybe you're asking tonight or maybe you're here tonight and you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders. You feel the weight of your circumstances. You feel the weight of just doing life day in and day out, maybe caught in the rat race. And I'll ask you, will you come to the good news of Jesus Christ again? Will you allow his spirit to work in your life? Will you move again in faith? Will you trust in him and hope in him even as we sang those songs? that He is faithful even when we are faithless, that He is enough for us in each and every circumstance. His power is made perfect in our weakness, not our strength, that He's calling you and He's inviting you to come. RSVP, yes, come, my son and daughter, come as you are. Watch how I transform and change your life in an instant. Because if you're just doing church services and hoping for the best, I promise you, it's not enough. Jesus didn't come to make you a better version of yourself. He came to bring dead people to life. It's not about Michael 2.0 or Impele 2.0. No, it's about a dead person in their sins coming to life in the power of Jesus Christ. And so he sends out this invitation. But then as we see in life, there are so many excuses. Verse 18, but they all alike began to make excuses. See, they gave up the splendor of the wedding feast for the things of this world. And so what is the first two excuses? Well, it's, I bought a field and I must go ex- see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. I don't know who buys a house first and then goes to see it. These are poor excuses. These are poor excuses. I'm going to buy a car. I've never seen it in my entire life. I'm just hoping for the best. But so often, so often we get transfixed and distracted by material things. That Paul writes, and what has cut in on you? You were running the good race. You've received the invitation, but we've got transfixed by things of this world that we think will give us pleasure. We got transfixed by things of this world that we think will give us affirmation and satisfy us and give us fulfillment. But Jesus writing, no, come to me. Come to my kingdom. Come rest in me and trust in me, and I will show you how good and glorious I am. I will show you the feast of heaven. I will show you my blessings and my favor. I will show you how I can take your life in an instant and transform it. I will show you how I can take you from anxiety to peace, from depression to fulfillment, from all these things. I will show you how good and glorious I am. We just need to ask VP, yes. And they begin to continue to make excuses. I'm busy, I just got married. Putting our family first, putting all these things that God has given us first, but forsaking the first thing, which is his kingdom and his invitation. I feel like God is calling the church to wake up again. What has he called us to? It is the great invitation. And so we all have a choice. If you open up your envelope, tonight you have a choice. There's the good news of Jesus Christ. He's called you. Maybe you're here tonight and you're still unsure about this. You're still unsure whether you can trust him and hope in him. Maybe you've walked away for a period of time and you've gotten so swayed by the things of this world that you've forgotten about his goodness and his grace. And I will ask you again, will you trust in him and will you ask VP yes to his kingdom? Will you remind yourself about the core of the gospel? That it's not just about you and your personal Jesus. It's actually about his kingdom and the lost and broken being made whole in his great story. What, what is our response going to be tonight, Life Changes Church? How is he calling you? What is he calling you into? Not just from what is he calling you into. He didn't just save you from the power of sin and death. He saved you for something greater, eternity at stake for those around you. See, we can't accept this invitation while we uh, um, we can't accept this invitation while we 
um, let's try this again. We can't accept this invitation while we entertain other offers. There we go. Got that out finally. We can't accept this invitation while we entertain other offers. As a young man, I used to do this, where I would wait until I got the best offer for a party, and I would say yes to one thing, but I knew that something else was coming, and then I would actually just craftily sneak my way into something else, because I knew that there was a better opportunity, a better thing. But we can't entertain this invitation while we are entertaining other offers. He wants to be the main thing in your life. He wants to be the center and the anchor and your firm foundation forevermore. Don't let other things distract you and detract away from the goodness of Jesus Christ in your life. And so the invitation is to be in communion with your king, Jesus. It's not an apathetic acceptance of his grace, but an intentional response from our hearts to show up, to partake in his feast, to respond to the invitation, and to be ready when the time comes for the festivities to begin. And so the only entrance, the only requirement for you is that you are ready and that you are more hungry for the things of God than the things of this world. That you are more hungry for the things of the wedding feast than what the world can offer. That's the only requirement. And so we receive the invitation. Then we need to accept and respond to it. And my third and final point, a simple sermon tonight, is your plus one. Who are you bringing along? Because it's never about you alone. It's about the world. Eternity is at stake. If we receive the good news, then we know that we have been saved from the penalty of sin. That there is God's wrath, but through Jesus Christ, we have been redeemed. And others need that redemption as well. And so we receive the initial invitation. This is the promise of salvation. We have been saved from our sin and from death. And we have been given an eternal inheritance with the Father in heaven. Secondly, we need to show up. We need to ask for PES. But thirdly, we are called to invite those who do not yet know the splendor of the King and how good the news is of Jesus Christ. And so who are you bringing to the wedding feast? See, if you have heard the good news tonight, then know that it's not only for you. I don't consider myself an evangelist. But I know that God has burdened me with a love for his people and his bride. That there is a burden on my heart to know that people need to know the good news of Jesus Christ. Because my life has been so changed and transformed by that, I know that he can do it again for others in this room. I know that he can bring healing in an instant. I know that he can save people from their addiction, from their depression, from their depravity, and he can bring fullness of life and joy and peace and hope and freedom in an instant. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. Because he holds the power of the keys of sin and death in his hands. He is more than a conqueror, and we are more than a conqueror in him. And that is the good news of the gospel. And so... The king says to his attendants, go out quickly, call all those, go to the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Then the master said, go out to the roads and the country lands and compel them to come in. Compel them to come in so that my house will be full. See, we are to gather all the people that we can find. The depressed, the lonely, the arrogant, the proud, the sick, and the poor the wealthy and the secure, the ones who seem to have it all together and the ones who don't, the rejected, the popular, the drunkard, the victim of abuse, the forgotten, the esteemed, the street sweeper, the government official, the addict, the CEO, the single mother, the young ones, teenagers, young adults, parents, middle age, mature in years, and everyone in between. We are go to go out and tell the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone. That's the invitation tonight. And so everyone needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And if we don't tell people about how good the Son is, they will never know how good the Father is. And so what is your response going to be? He is calling you this evening to a greater story than your own. He is calling you out of your sin and out of your brokenness so that you can walk free in fullness of life, showing people how glorious the Son is. And He is putting a burden on your heart, I believe, tonight, not just to live for your own story, but to live for His glory. 
in eternity that others need to know His grace and His goodness again. Can we stand to our feet? Simple sermon this evening. But I believe if we allow the good news to take traction in our hearts, we will be forever changed and ruined for anything else. I was a young man with a broken story who all I wanted to do was make money and make a career for myself. I was depressed and lonely, but I found freedom and purpose in Jesus Christ. And now I am ruined for anything else. And this isn't just for a preacher on a stage, but it's for each and every one of us because we are the bride of Jesus Christ. We are the body of Jesus Christ and he is calling us to something greater. There are people in this room who have been given words of knowledge, who have been given gifts and talents to be used for his kingdom of God and you've been keeping them hidden for far too long. There's people in this room who have forgotten the invitation and what God is calling you to. There's also people in this room who I believe have been carrying their pain and their shame and their brokenness. And you feel like you, you've been doing it all by yourself. And I feel like the invitation is let go, come and follow me. Find your peace, find your wholeness at the foot of the cross. And then walk in His grace and His goodness and watch how He transforms your life. Watch how He takes away the pain. Watch how He brings healing and wholeness and freedom to your story. And then be willing to accept that burden for others, that others need to receive the good news of Jesus Christ. If you have haven't been unsettled tonight, ask God to show you a burden for the world, a burden for others. The life changes 5 p.m. Will we be the good news? Will we tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ wherever we go? If there are seats empty here tonight, there are people who need to hear about His good news. And this isn't a strategy to fill church. This is a strategy to see the lost and the broken find healing in the person of Jesus. Why? Because that was always God's plan from the beginning. And so with all eyes closed, if for the first time you're saying, I want to say yes to this invitation. I want to say yes to this Jesus. I want to make him my personal Lord and Savior. I want to follow Him. I'm going to trust in Him. I may not know how this turns out. I may, may not have all the answers, but I'm willing to put my trust in this Jesus that you speak about. I'm going to ask you right now, will you just lift up your invitation card with all eyes closed? See that hand. See that hand. And know you've made a decision tonight. And this decision will change your life forevermore. This decision will bring healing and freedom to your story. Why? Because you trust in one who is greater than them all. Jesus Christ. And so Lord, we thank you for each and every hand here tonight. We thank you for each and every person who has said yes to your kingdom and said yes to you. And I pray that you will pour out your spirit in this place, Lord that they have chosen to make you their Lord, your, their Lord and Savior, that you are good and that you are enough for them. And we thank you that you have included us in your story and that it's through you that we are sons and daughters in your kingdom. And then I pray for each and every one year, Lord, that you will burden us with a weight for your people, that there are people in desperate need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And that you are using us, Lord, the lowly, maybe the marginalized, maybe those who think that you, they can never be used for your kingdom. You are using us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, we've received your invitation. 
We're responding yes to your call. And now we ask you to show us who we are bringing along. That the community of Tableview will be forever changed because sons and daughters respond to the call and they choose to come alive to the purpose and the plan of the gospel. That the city of Cape Town will be forever changed. Why? Because they respond to the call. They have come alive to the plan and purpose of the gospel. That their families, their homes, their schools, the hospitals, the universities will be forever changed. Why? Because they've come alive to the plan and the purpose of the gospel. So Lord, we honor you tonight, Jesus. We honor you tonight. We say, have your way. Pour out your spirit in this place, Lord and get all the glory. Amen.